Today is April 2nd, 2015. My name is Edna Sussman. I'm a reference librarian here at the Half Hollow Hills Community Library in Dix Hills, New York. We are interviewing Emmanuel Pleasant, a Korean Army veteran, as part of our Veterans Testimonial Project and in collaboration with the Library of Congress's Veterans History Project. Thank you so much, Manny, for being here today and participating in our project. Thank you so much for inviting me. Manny, where and when were you born? I was born in New York City, August 18th, 1933. And who were your parents? What were their names and what did they do? Well, my father, well, his original name was Israel Plisetsky, who came to the United States at age 16 on his own. From? Uh, from Russia, mm -hmm. uh, near Moscow, uh, supposedly the leading his family here, but interfered uh, was the Korean, I'm sorry, uh, was the Russian Revolution and uh, World War I. He was here, his family, my four aunts, and other aunts and uncles uh, and family were in Russia. We were the American oh. relatives. So he came when he was 16? 16. Alone? Yes. Wow. Where did he go? How did he know what to do? I think it was, as I understand it, there was a cousin uh, that, was, it, that was in New York, and he came and he wow. stayed with them, wow. and then was on his own. <laughs> wow. Um, and, and, of course, and learned to speak English here. Right. And I have to just comment now. Uh, he spoke English very well. But his V's and W's, I loved when he would ask, well, do, do we have some vodka? <laughs> that, I love that sound. So he always had a little accent. Oh, yeah, the ti tiniest of a few words. The rest was very clear. So he met your mom here? Yes, he? she, she came from Russia also, oh. actually from, which has been the headlines, Kiev in the mm -hmm. Ukraine. Oh. Uh, she did come with her family, but they came in parts. There were... Uh, she had. She was one of seven sisters and one brother, mm. and they didn't all come all together mm -hmm. over a three-year period of time. Some of them came. Well, she was 11 years old when she mm. came here. That your parents didn't know each other when they were younger. No, but I. I'm going to tell you how they met. Yeah. My father. What, what was who, your mom's name? My well, my mother's name was Kate. Mm -hmm. Kate Tushevsky. Uh -huh. Okay. But really, it was her middle name. Oh. And uh, her. Official name really was Miriam, oh, I see. but she was only always known as Kate, Kate. and Anne Kate and Kate. You know, that that was her. Okay. And she she was a Kate. Okay. <laughs> yes. And they met. You were going to say how they met. Uh, uh, to me, it's a it's a wonderful story. In, in the when I I grew up in the back closet. We lived we lived in Manhattan in an apartment. There was a box, and there were ice skates there. There were racing skates, and there were figure skates. Mm -hmm. So obviously, the racing skates were my father's. The figure skates were hers. And I've been there for so long, but the story told to me that he, who's also a little formal uh, in, in certain ways, mm -hmm. uh, and they, there was a skating rink, and he was with a friend, and she was with a friend, and uh, by that time he was called Pleasant as a last name, uh -huh. Lester Pleasant, and he skated up and introduced himself as, uh, oh, hello, I'm Mr. Pleasant. And he had to know my mom to know what her answer would be. Well, I'm Miss Gloom. Oh, that's cute. And, and that was <laughs> the beginning. <laughs> How old were they, you think? Uh, in the 30s. Oh, wow. Yes, it was early 30s. Late for that generation. Yes, it, it, it was. Huh. Now, um, what did your parents do after they got married? What kind of work were they in? Well... I can only tell you the work that my father was doing as, uh, from the time I was born, because I have an older brother who's eight years older than I am. Uh, but my fa I always know my father is uh, being half owner of a delicatessen. Mm -hmm. So I grew up on deli, mm -hmm. and uh, nice. that, it was very, very, very <laughs> nice. And my mom uh, helped out. I mean, she raised the children, and she would help out uh, in the store. Uh -huh. and. Uh, was in she, Manhattan? The, in the Manhattan, 76th Street and Broadway. We lived at 83rd Street between West End and River. We, they'd pick that in apartments so the kids could go into Riverside mm -hmm. Park. Mm -hmm. and that's where I grew up. That was my backyard. It was mm -hmm. wonderful. Um, but uh, she at times would handle the cash register. And of course, at that time, uh, 
if any of the addition, what the what, you do it on the back of the sure. back, and she was a whiz. Mm -hmm. I mean, she could do it, and she was known in the family nice. as just marvelous in, uh, in in math. So you had one brother. And, yeah, and yes. Any other siblings? No, just the. Just, so just did he serve? What was his name? Stanley. 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 Did he serve in the military? Yes, he did. My brother. Well, I have to let me back up to my father first. Sure. My father, it's like he's twenty-one. Uh, was in uh, the U.S. Army in World War I. Wow. He served in Panama, and he would tell about how he would ride guard duty around this big base, which, by the way, a uh, thrill of a lifetime, and a little teary-eyed on it. One time when my wife and I took a cruise, and part of it was to Panama, we took a helicopter ride, and as part of that, they went around that base, and I can look down 84 years later and visualize, you know, my father sure. riding a horse around that entire... Wow. Oh, it was on horses then. Yeah, well, it, it, guard duty, he said, they were, yeah, they did have a lot of horses then. Wow. wow. So, that was... Interesting, yeah. very interesting. So, so he was in World War I. Uh, he was in World War I, and uh, came World War... Uh, he was in the American Legion. He was very patriotic, always a patriotic man. He also was in the Masons. Mm. Uh, that's interesting because there was one American Legion post that was made up of only of Masons. Oh. And uh, as as a youngster, when they still had uh, Memorial Day parades down Riverside Drive, it was near where we lived. And uh, when his unit came by, probably about twenty, the Masons had an apron on, which indicated oh. that he's. And of course, they're all sort of military, older men, you know, <laughs> military. But he always would break ranks and come over and give me a kiss. Oh, uh, nice. Was very sweet. You know, very nice. Type of thing. But came World War II, uh, he joined the State Guard uh -huh. and became mess sergeant. Nice. <laughs> so he was also, you know, in that part of, of World War II. My brother, who was. Uh, about 16 at that time, lied about his age, and he joined the same unit, and there's a wonderful picture of oh. my father in uniform, my brother in uniform, mm -hmm. you know, with a great big smile nice. on both. And that's wow, a, I bet. That's Very a treasure. Proud. That's a treasure for, you know, picture. So, so this, um, your dad was in the World War One before he was married? Yes. And then, and then when he got out? He then was working in the deli and married your I don't know. I don't know whether he was working in the deli and because we have some pictures of him, which are uh, uh, stock types of pictures of in vaudeville, and he could oh. tap dance. He would sit in a chair. These okay. are wonderful memories, oh. because he would sit in the chair. He had two songs. I remember one of them was America. He would tap out the tune, and you would recognize the tune. Nice. Nice. You know. Amazing. Well, his family uh, in Russia all were in the arts. Oh. In the ballet, uh -huh. uh, and in something similar in the circus, you know, these were very athletic. Did that uh, rub off on you and your brother? Um, I think, uh, uh, I think, in many ways, it, it, it did. Uh, in, in different ways, it did. My brother became very much interested in the dance later on, mm -hmm. and was involved. Uh, he was chairman of the board of the Alvin Alley. Uh, he had become a lawyer, and he helped them in. Uh, you know, he, he got that interest he held on to. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, nice. wonderful interest. Mine, I was a very good dancer. Really? <laughs> yeah. See that? Wow. And, uh, it was very interesting when I would meet some of the, many years later, meeting some of the relatives as they came in with the ballet. Oh. And I have to say that when I was one year old, my father went back to Russia to visit for a summer. And one of the stories he tells is of his 11 year old niece who would dance around the dining room table. Mm -hmm. She ended up being uh, a prima ballerina of the Bolshoi Ballet, wow. absolute. Wow. Some people consider her the best wow. uh, dancer in the world. Amazing. Her brother, uh, brothers, Azari and Alexander, also in the ballet. Mm -hmm. Ale Alexander uh, passed away at a youngish age of 50. Zari has been with the Bejar Ballet, teaching around the world too. And ants, I met them. Nice. Uh, That's wonderful. Uh, wonderful. Etc. <laughs> so, so, okay, so now you, what were you doing before you entered the service? School. school. High school or college? Well, yeah, well, certainly I went to you know, okay. elementary school, uh, high school. Uh, I went to City College of New York. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, 
they had ROT, Secret Service Officers Training Corps, uh, which was a requirement at that time for all freshmen and sophomores. Really? Yes. Everyone had to do it? We had, there were 1,500 members of that unit. Uh, I think it was one of the largest, if not the largest, uh, in the United States. Hmm. But then if you wanted to go for the third and fourth year, because you then wanted to go into the service afterwards you know, uh, as an officer, you had to elect that, mm -hmm. which, which I, I did. You did. Uh, I have a lot of very fond memories of that period of time because I was a member of a group which is called the, uh, it's, it's Honor Military Society, mm -hmm. it's, it's called the Pershing Rivals. Oh. And friendships developed then have remained the, the, the current time. Really? Yes. Yeah, so Wonderful. We have an alumni association. We sort of also meet with some from a couple of other colleges nearby as well as have our own uh, conferences or now meetings. Still, somewhere. it's called the Persian Rifles? Pershing Rifles, Pershing. named after General Pershing. Pershing. Right. And, uh, you know, it was nationwide. We yeah. had the City College unit. So that was a nationwide organization? Yes, huh. yes. Which, is it still in existence? It is still in existence. It has big downtime when they cut down on ROTC dramatically for numbers of years. Mm -hmm. And of course, this has a society within a group within it. Right. Uh, probably a 30-year period of time was at a low point, mm -hmm. but it's rebuilding. I must say partly under the influence of a fellow named Colin Powell. Oh who uh, started uh, or, or was a major push for junior ROTC in high schools, mm -hmm. and he was a member of our unit. Oh. So it's through the years we've watched his, yeah. his growth, and wow. he, nice. he kids me a little bit on the last time we met at, uh, at something. I heard uh, him at a library conference. He's amazing. He's yes, he's speaking yes, wonderful. Yes. Actually, from that, from that group, which in City College was from 1936 when I started till it ended in about 1966 or 8, about 38 period of time, that when we finally, actually I was the first president of the Alumni Association, then there was a long period of time, not, not, no activity, but then it really was Colin Powell talking to another one of the guys, Mark Natanis, who was on his staff I think at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, did some resurrection of it and looking up and we phone calls nice. and you know you search out people, and uh, very nice. So we jokingly say, well, he was, a, he was the second president of the alumni. <laughs> so I think there was some others in between. Very yeah, nice. I, I kid about that one. So but you that, are that unit uh, has still still has uh, three times a year a, a great newsletter. Oh, People write in, wonderful. make contacts, tell what they do, what has happened with it. Very nice. And we, and we've, the first reunion, I remember, going with my wife, and I said, I don't know if anyone's going to remember me or if I'm going to remember them. But as I turned the corner in the back of someone's house, was in the back, the big backyard, about five or six of the guys come running up to me. Manny, Manny, we're so glad you're here. Nice. You're the oldest. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> you know. How nice that so, is. So, but I really was the only one from my class, okay. you know, and uh, so I had the responsibility so to reach out. And sure. Then somehow we hooked into the World War II guys who had formed their own unit before. So it, you, you know, combined, kind combined. of right. So Very nice. new guys. Uh, you know, who had been through World War II oh, as well. So there was, it's, it's, it was one unit. You're all City College of New York, mm -hmm. Persian Rifles Company, A8. Nice. Uh, and uh, part of it, we have an association, very nice. a member of the national one too, of mm -hmm. course, you know, things like that. Yeah, yeah. very nice. So you, you graduated in, from City College before serving? Yes, well, I, yes, because I was in the Reserve Officer Training Corps. Right. So you graduate, I mean, uh, and and then uh, you get uh, commissioned uh -huh. uh, as a second lieutenant. Uh, I'm sort of proud to say I, I did earn what's called a distinguished military graduate because I had done pretty well in that. Honors type it, thing. It was. Uh -huh. And the other one, I kid some people about it. Not, no one else from, from, from any of the Persian rifles will remember this. I got a letter from the Marine Corps oh. 
saying I had been recommended to them that would like me to come into the Marines. Oh. <laughs> you know, I, to, as an officer, I'd have to go to officers' candidate school. Uh, but it, it was flattering. But mm -hmm. when I graduated, I could have gone into the regular army or the reserves. Mm -hmm. And the regular army would be a career path. Uh -huh. And I said, no, I have a problem taking orders from people who I think I know more than. Mm -hmm. And so I, I said, I'm not going to go to the regular army, therefore how could I possibly go into the Marines? It, uh -huh. just, it wasn't... Uh, I never realized you had that kind of choice, being in ROTC when it was over. Well, it, of going in... Of in being you, reserves or not reserves. Well, there was just some certain people who... Oh. A select group mm -hmm. that I was part of. Uh -huh. this, 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 you had to be a uh, distinguished military graduate, and then you could, you'd could you have the option of going into the regular army, making the idea of that, making that a career, which some of the guys did, mm -hmm. and many didn't, but stayed in the reserves. I stayed in the reserves, uh, I served two years active, but I stayed in the reserves for four and a half years, mm -hmm. and, but family pressures were such that I said, no more, but a lot of the guys stayed. Mm -hmm. So you were in the reserves for... Two years and then two years active? No, active two years oh. and in the reserves for four and a half more. So when you got out of college, you went in two years active? Yeah, it was four months after I got out of college, finally gave me the orders okay. to, to go uh, to Fort Benning, Georgia. For basic? basic uh -huh. It's basic uh, training, four or five months. Mm -hmm. Now, what was your major in college? Uh, health and physical education. Uh -huh. I graduated. I was... You know, thinking of becoming that as a teacher. Mm -hmm. It was uh, in the service, some of the things that I did really clarified that I really did want to do that. Uh -huh. And I, I, could, I could be a good instructor, mm -hmm. teacher, call it what you will, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, I did. Later on you did. Yes, and it was very nice because here I was getting discharged in California. And uh, I was from Fort Ord, California. Be uh, I'll tell you why I ended up there. Um, and I remember writing my mother, I said, send me uh, from the yellow pages all the high schools. Oh. So I sent out about 50 things. I was getting out in November mm -hmm. uh, 56 uh, for substitute teaching. For New in New York, in, in then New yeah. York City? And I got back two responses, one a little card saying, we put you on a substitute list. It was put on a lot of others, but one was a note. It's such a, it was so wonderful, I'll just never forget it. A handwritten note from the chairman of the department at Commerce High School in, in New York, saying, we have a position opening from December through May, because someone gets a, an appointment at the Board of Education in that period of time. And I am a lieutenant colonel in the National Guard, and we take care of our boys. Oh. You got the job. Yes. <laughs> well, you never know what people want. I, 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 so I, it's amazing. Uh, it, was, it was, went back, and I, you know, I, I got, a, after four days, I was getting a lot of calls for substitute teaching. They were on the lists. Mm -hmm. And one of, the, one of the schools wanted to keep me. I said, nope, I, got, I have this other. So that's, so I, was it really till May, or you, you got extended there? A year and a half more, of course. Oh, nice. <laughs> Until I became what's called a regular teacher, and then right. I, I went to a... Uh, Different school? Whitney Vocational High School oh. in Brooklyn. Okay, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Yes, okay. But okay. So, uh, in, when you finish with ROTC, you can pick which branch of the service you wanted, right? Well, you could. Well, it depended on your major. A lot of the fellows were in, in the engineering schools, uh -huh. so they would go into engineering. Of what branch? Uh, I mean, U.S. Army, okay. the engineering branch. Got it, okay. Yeah. Um, most, most of us from any of the others, was, you start off in the infantry, but you'd have to apply to something else. Did you? No. I just, you stayed in the infantry? Yeah, that's, that's what, that was right for me. Um, so why did, why did you choose that? The, the army and infantry. Really, it's, it's the background here. Here was my father was in the army and was the infantry. My brother had been in the army and the infantry. I see. Uh, you said it you, was a natural course. And, you know, okay. that's it's like a family heritage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So then I 
So what do, what happened when you departed for training camp and during your early days of training? Well, say again where where the training started in in Fort Benning, Georgia. Right. Well, got down there and I remember well I had been married at the time. Oh. And uh, we we stayed uh, initially at uh, one of these fellows from from college from this group. You know, who had been down there uh, six months before, whatever it was. I stayed at their house for a week until I got Army housing. For, with your wife or not? Yes, oh. yes, we had off-campus housing, okay. uh, which was right. I never was in the barracks. Mm -hmm. uh, the, around, around Fort Benning, there are many little areas privately owned, but you know, acce accessible to the base and uh, approved by you uh -huh. know, the service. Or the, so it's all it's it's off base housing. Right, right. So, so had a little bit of a family life and right. social life there. How long were you there? How long was the training? Uh, probably I was in Fort uh, Bending uh, four to five months. Uh, well, uh, did you learn any specialized training or? No, again there the, the choice of it, you wanted to go to helicopter school or paratroopers and. I said, look, I just went it straight. Uh, you Infantry. Know, or rangers. Oh, you know, okay. I mean, these, uh, all of these were options uh, huh. that you could have for extra training, specialization. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so they gave you the choice. Yeah, I think if I wasn't married at the time, uh, you know, I, I would have been able to, mm -hmm. to think those through mm -hmm. more so. Mm -hmm. But this, uh, this impacted on any decisions that mm -hmm. I made, so. Do you recall your instructors, and if so, what were they like? It's always difficult to recall the instructors, except for one, I remember, uh, because this is, this is, I think, a very interesting incident uh, there. He was uh, a lecturer, maybe just a one-time lecturer, but maybe four or five hundred people in this gigantic area. And, uh, he obviously had uh, been injured, but, uh, and his hands were at his side. He had been paralyzed on both hands. But, uh, you know, was the instructor. And our unit had, uh, obviously, people from all over for the United States. And one of this uh, very popular guy named Bo from Texas. Bo was probably the shortest guy. And what do we say? No, he doesn't look like he's got the right size, you know, the minimum size. <laughs> But he calls on Bo, who is in the middle of these 500, and you know, Bo stands up and he says, oh, well, some kind of a comment about... Uh, size? Uh, yeah, about his size, because he says, I think you... Oh, I thought you are still sitting down there. And I'll never forget this, and I remember this. Bo does this, he says, where I come from, they measure the height of a man from here up, and it <laughs> tore the place That's apart. Cute. And I've never, for, never forgotten that. <laughs> I mean, periodically, I use it in, in appropriate good. settings. Very good. That was that was well. <laughs> and that was a good statement too. So you got along with the, the instructors. Were okay. I mean, you. Yeah. Um, is, they were instructors. Well, I, but I do remember that. I mean, you have so much, uh, you know, so little sleep and so much to do. Mm -hmm. uh, it's fifty minutes on, ten minute break. So uh -huh. the ten minutes. You got people who sit down, you know, they lie down. But then, boy, in 10 minutes, the whistle blew, and you had to be up and on your feet and ready to go. Wow. And I said, no, this is not working. I learned to lean up against a tree and close my eyes and take a 10-minute nap. Wow. When, when we had to get back at I was ready to go. And then I noticed in time, a lot of other people doing it. Wow. <laughs> because if you... If you lie down, then uh, yeah. you, you could be out, and, yeah. and then wow. there's other trouble. So. It's a good technique to yeah. get through it. <laughs> you wow. have to see this. Right. You have to adapt to the situations, yeah. and you have to figure out ways to go around what has to be done sure. and still get the mission accomplished. I guess you really did. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was my next question. Sure. How did you adapt to military life by standing up asleep for 10 minutes? Well, <laughs> that was my training. Wow. Uh, but then I went to Fort Ord. I was supposed to go with the unit to Germany, and there was no fighting at the time. I said, God, this is great. We're going to get to see Europe and be part of it. But I had a training accident, which I had a, my back was broken. And uh, How did that happen? 
Well, they lined us up for uh, like uh, hand-to-hand combat, and uh, in no s- any such order. But the fellow I'm doing it with was an all-American tackle from Michigan, and I'm a 150-pound <laughs> guy from New York. What can I tell you? <laughs> and he fell on me one way, and uh, there's a compression fracture of the ninth thoracic vertebrae. I remember it to this day. So I had a body cast on. They did cut a hole so I could scratch. Uh-huh. When it, it, it got to move, they put um, things in. So you could... S- they uh, move it out, and I, had to, I switched T-shirts twice a day. Wait, did you remain with the military then, or were you sent home or in the hospital? No, or? I missed, missed uh, one week of training oh. in the hospital, and it was back to training. After, well, in the body cast? Yes. Really? And I did one very foolish thing. <laughs> I knew that you had to have, I was keeping alive my chances of going with the unit. So there were numbers of activities, the rifle range, grenade range, all of these things. You know, I had gone through everything, and this was towards the end, and the, what was left was called the infiltration course. This is where you crawl with your rifle through sand under barbed wire with live machine guns firing overhead. Don't stand up. <laughs> That's the one thing. So uh, he put me aside with some other people who were waiting there. And I'm saying, you know, I've got to be checked off for that completion. <sighs> so I jumped in. In the body cast. Though. In the body cast with a rifle, 80 yards through sand, crawling. Because you have to breathe. And, of course, the body cast is... It, I'm, I'm gasping for breath. I made it. And I said, oh, I made it. The captain, he said, what did you do? And he said, we would have checked you off. <laughs> yeah. So I went back to the barracks and... Rested a little. Yeah. Wow. There was another experience in the Army. This was actually before I got into the service. It was in six-week summer camp in the uh, summer camp. It was training up at... Um, upstate uh, New York. Part of ROTC? ROTC. You had to go through that six weeks uh-huh. uh, previous year, so the previous summer. I, I did, and a lot of people got food poisoning. Uh-huh. Uh, they call, They said it was from bad scallops or something, but I got uh, one eye closed, the other one was like this. Uh-huh. Some other parts of my body swelled up. It was the soft tissues of the body that were affected. Uh-huh. But the next day, because this was towards the end of training, we had to take the Army General Classification Test. It's a type of IQ test, uh-huh. spatial relationships and such. And in the afternoon, leadership reaction course, where we were in groups of four on the ground, and there was problem solving. Uh, you had to cross the creek, and you look around, or, or this way, this way, and look for some boards, you know. So we, I'm very proud of this, because it, it, it did show me that under adverse circumstances, the human being, the human body, can do more than they probably would have done under normal circumstances. And there's about 165 people in the unit. These are all future officers from all over the United States. And they posted a week later the order, the rank order of, of the, uh, the score that you got. I was number four in the leadership reaction course. Wow. Wow. And to my amazement, I then looked at this other one where I had done with one eye looking down like this and, and forcing every part of my body. But I was the top score by six points wow. of that thing. Fantastic. And I really learned that I, under, this is how people react under adverse circumstances. You probably are going to go if you, you know, beyond where you were beforehand. And of course, I never did forget that as a lesson That's wonderful. From, from, yep. from, the, from that. So, okay, Bar- what about you were in married housing, so to speak, yes. during all of this? So the food and barracks wasn't an issue. What about social life with you and your wife with other married well, couples? Or? Well, yeah, well, your, your neighbors. Yeah. And I remember this. The one thing I remember at the first house that we had is we came back one day and there had been an explosion of termites all over the entire place, which we then moved out of <laughs> to some, wow. someplace else. But uh, Where was look, that, that was down south. Was that in Georgia still? Georgia. You were in Georgia. That was in Georgia at the time. So after Georgia, what, where did you go? 
that was uh, instead of Germany, and I was disappointed. But they sent me to Fort Ord, California, which is on the Monterey Peninsula. That's right near Carmel. It's between you know Los Angeles and San Francisco along the coast. And so people kid me, oh, so you had a lot, you were in the sand a lot, you know, on the beach. <laughs> And I said, I was in the sand a lot, but it was in the boondocks, uh -huh. because that's where we trained. Uh -huh. But it was you know, a chance to see different things on sure. when there were weekends or something. Uh, was truck. your wife working at the time, or could she? She, oh, she wasn't working, uh, except for one week. of She got some part-time work, but then she went back to school. She had, oh. uh, she had dropped out of school. And it was good that she, she completed a two-year mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. And I got a certificate from yeah. that. And, okay. uh, so you, um, what kind of, what were your duties? I was executive officer of a training company. It means I was the second in charge, uh, which means when you're second in charge, you do most of the work. <laughs> yeah, which, which was a fine. I mean, um, of new recruits who would come in for six weeks of basic training. And you, you teach them the basic things about it, how to march, how to work, work with a rifle, take apart the rifle, all this t type of thing, how to make a bunk, you know, how to get the initial parts of being a soldier, you know, the transition from civilian life to, uh, to military life. And it was a very interesting experience in many ways. I, I, I really solidified that I want uh, that I was I was good at working with people and you know for my future possibility of you know being a, a teacher right. it was it was even strengthened when an order came down that um, the officers and enlisted men it's called the cadre those who were would take the people to the training and there was a it's called division faculty who would who would run the rifle range, or who would run the, uh, the grenade range, or any of the others. But the order came down that we were to take over some of that training. Mm -hmm. Now, usually the others, it was about six months that they would break somebody in to be a part of the cadre. Mm -hmm. And what they were really saying to us was, you take it over immediately. Mm -hmm. So, I did. Mm -hmm. um, Couple of, of the the corporals and sergeants took over some. What was your rank? I was then I was a second lieutenant, uh -huh. and I, I I just found uh, I was a natural. They had you know sheets of paper of how do you run this, and I had been through it with some units before, and the cadre with the, rather the faculty was amazed, and they would say to me, "How could you possibly? It's a six month training program for us to do this, and you did it, huh. yeah." And I knew. I had the teaching yeah. stuff in Wonderful. me, and it, it really was... Uh, that was in what year? 53? Well, no. that would be in 50, uh, 56, probably. At that point, of course, it was a tail, and probably had been several months at the, the, in the training program, so I had taken units through. Mm -hmm. One nice thing I did, it harks back to this Pershing Artful group, one of one of the things that we did there was um, marching contests between various colleges. Mm -hmm. uh, trick drill was part of it. Regular drill was part of it. Colleges? You mean actually ac university academic? Mm -hmm. oh. At City College, right? we were on uh, some pictures of us of, uh, doing that in, in what was Lewison Stadium. Oh. Uh, for those who may remember Lewiston Stadium, which has been torn down, they had concerts there. Okay. We practiced our football there and lacrosse. I was on those freshman teams, and it was rocks. Oh. <laughs> there was not a blade of grass. No, no yeah, turf. No, yeah, this was this is it. But uh, we would do these types uh, of things. And I, so when I was taking, uh, I remember one particular unit, maybe it was the third unit I was taking through, I said, yeah, I'm going to make a trick drill team out of these recruits. And uh, selected about 18 in, in times. And it was really very nice because it was like a certain day where parents were allowed in to oh, meet, nice. you know, 
and we put on, I had these recruits do a trick drill demonstration with the rifles and uh, different things I had learned before. And then so I said, okay. Very you nice. Know, it, it spread to them and made a lot of people you know, happy. Yeah, and yeah. parents very proud sure, to, sure. See, to see. This was not the normal drill. This mm -hmm. was 18 guys I took. And I said, okay, it's going to be three by six. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the formation. And I, anyway, very so nice. that was a nice memory of, uh, I said, all right. I could train recruits mm -hmm. into this. And I will say that a number of times uh, they would rate the various companies of training, you know, and uh, several of the times, you know, our, you our company, different, different groups, taught them enough about how to, and they had the military bearing. I broke the training, uh, the marching into segments that they could pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up. Mm -hmm. Next thing they know, they were doing it. Nice, and, uh, nice. Also, it was a teaching techniques that I was learning mm -hmm. there, which... Transferred well, back when you yeah, became a teacher. Yeah, That's yeah, wonderful. So. How, how did you stay in touch with family and friends back home? Uh, that was by mail, mostly, and one or two phone calls sometimes. Mm -hmm. To your folks and... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, uh, my father had had a stroke oh. and, uh, you know, was confined to the house. And actually, uh, between my going from Georgia to California, I was able to take a, a, it's called a delay in route. Came up to New York, seen my, my oh. dad and my family. And even more unfortunately is uh, when I said goodbye, Finally, I said, see you soon. He said, no, you won't, which was not. And uh, got the phone call in Philadelphia at my aunt's house four hours later really? that he had passed on. Oh, he knew he was dying. He kept himself alive. Wow, you to know, see to, you. To see you. So, wow. How were yeah. you traveling then, by train? or? No, I was by car, driving. Driving? Yep. From New York to California? Yes, and you know, divided up into five or six. Like military places. transport? Like my father's old car. <laughs> you drove yourself? Yes. Oh. Civilian car. Oh, how remember come? Remember well. They, they didn't transport you? That they could have. It's not elected to, to do that. Because I had my wife with me, right. too. Right, So this was okay. this is how, yeah. how we went. So your mom, you then remained in touch with your mom in New York? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's another 11 years, and then she passed away, uh -huh. too. So. In the same apartment. Same really? Group Manhattan. Group. Wow. Um, so, as far when you were off duty, you had off duty time, what did you do? Well, it depends on how much off duty time. If, if some of it was, I, I liked to, to go near Carmel or to walk through Carmel. Mm -hmm. We would do that. And then there was something that was called the 17 Mile Drive, mm -hmm. which is the most, most beautiful drive along the coast mm -hmm. at that point. Mm -hmm. nice. Years later, uh, went out to California with my wife, told her all about it. We flew to San Francisco and we were going down to Los Angeles to visit some relatives. And I talked about this long drive between the two cities, and then we hit the 17 mile drive, and it was foggy all those oh, days. Shit. Oh, <laughs> I was mean, like, you know, the build up of that. Yeah, part. too bad. Yeah, so. <laughs> it still was nice, but it wasn't. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. Was, wow. Well, now you were um, you were in the service when the war Korean War ended. The Korean yes, conflict? well, in the armistice it was officially January thirty first, nineteen fifty five. Okay. So what? I was in the service in November of fifty four. So I, ha so the fighting had stopped. Uh huh. You were in California. I at was the time, at the time. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think I'm on it. Yes, I guess. No, I wasn't. I was in Fort Benning, Georgia at the oh, time. Oh, back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, through going through college in the, in the ROTC, there were conflicts that occurred, and some people don't remember. There was the first Lebanon War, mm -hmm. and we were all waiting that they would call us, as has happened in uh, Iraq and mm -hmm. Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. With these multiple uh, call, uh, from the National Guard and Reserve units, and we were... You know, didn't even realize that kind of thing was going to happen or could happen in the future. Mm -hmm. But we were waiting to be called. But no, they let us stay mm -hmm. uh, in college toward, in the training that we had. Mm -hmm. um, 
some people enlisted. I mean, that's that was something mm -hmm. different. Now, um, it, when you left the service, they gave you an op. This was in fifty six. Fifty six. Yes. Fifty six. Did did you have an option to stay in or? Oh sure. But you didn't. You no. I, I had elected that. No. The, no. The, the military was not for me. That uh, again, you know, a married and family yeah. uh, did enter into that decision. Sure. If I were single at that time, I might have done a number of other mm -hmm. gone other other routes. Mm -hmm. So then you moved back to where? Uh, into the New York area and. A couple of different places. One was in the Bronx. Uh, I remember 1691 Davidson Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Were you looking for teaching positions at that point? Well, I, I had it lined up. Mm -hmm. uh, for uh, four days after I came back, I got calls to do substitute teaching. And once in the high school I went to, I went to the Bronx High School of Science. Oh, wow. So I go back. I was an average student there. I mean, that was very, very bright kids there. Mm -hmm. That was not into all of the studying so mm -hmm. much, you know. But uh, it was interesting going back, you know, six years after I had, had left, now I was a teacher and I had a you know, yeah. sports outfit on, you know. Yeah. And my aunt, uh, my God bless my Aunt Dorothy, who's still alive at 101. Wow. She was the one of my mother's sisters who had been born in the United States. Uh, she was teaching that school, French and uh, Spanish. And uh, she's a very small woman. And I uh, found out where the faculty room at a period I was off, and she was off, and I sat in that faculty room, and I heard her, the way she walked fast with her high heels, because she was very short, on the tile outside. I says, here comes my aunt. She comes in, what are you doing here? I said, what am I doing here? I'm a teacher for today. You know? nice. It was just a nice, very uh, nice, nice yeah, yeah. type of thing. And, uh, and, uh, so uh, how, how long did you teach then? All right, from the substitute teaching, which was for almost two years mm -hmm. in Commerce High School, I took an exam, became what's called a regular teacher as, as opposed to a long-term substitute teacher. And I went to Eli Whitney Vocational High School in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, there for about four, four years. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, I'm proud to say... Uh, that another fellow that I knew from college, uh, Harold Makovsky and myself, uh, developed from zero a track team, cross-country team, indoor and outdoor track. There was no track around the school as it is in suburbia. We had uh, marked in paint a 180-foot circle to have practice outside, ran down the halls, <laughs> used the gym to teach uh, some shot putting, and uh, about a half a mile away, there was a, a park called McCarran Park, where we, we'd go down there and run. And there was a track there. Uh -huh. And I'm proud to say that these kids, which was a um, really diverse group. Wonderful. Uh, nice. And you started the track program. They did, and they started scoring medals. And we run indoor track against 108 other schools. And when we beat boys high, boys high, which is now boys and girls high, it was called the novice, you know, the non-winning medals up to that point. And our ninth grade team got these big silver. I mean, it was, it was such a morale booster sure. uh, for, for the kids themselves and for the school to see that they, they could succeed. Right. Uh, Very nice. And, and other teaching I did was always the idea of you can succeed, you know, which, uh, oh, wow. which stayed with me for a long time. When you left the military and then went to teaching, how, how was the adjustment for you from military life? <sighs> that was easy. There were supervisory or higher ranking people, you know, all the time. Uh -huh. Yet I had uh, my own little whatever I was doing teaching each and, time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, so uh, it was like going to teaching teaching in school, kind of. You had classes I, and I had yeah, I had uh -huh. classes. I was uh, more interested. Well, I was as interested in the health teaching, classroom teaching, as I was in the gymnasium teaching, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Eventually, 
so interested in the health teaching that when I started teaching out on Long Island, uh, and I started working with the community, uh, ended up having a, myself and a couple of community members uh, started a, a storefront operation to work with kids into drugs and alcohol. Really? And that program, even though I was, while I was still teaching in that district, I, I also supervised it. That program lasted for 35 years. Wow. I got in one of the first four initial community organizations, because I was functioning in that sense in part of the community organization, to get funding from Nassau County. Okay. And it was 35 years Wonderful. of existence. What part of the island was that? That was in Nassau County. Uh, and I, I taught in a couple of different schools. Oh, I see. And so I, I went from uh, Eli Whitney Vocational High School to Levittown, mm -hmm. Shared a ride with my neighbor, who was a teacher there. Uh, and then from there, I went to Roslyn, several years there, a few years there. And then I went to Herrick's mm -hmm. School District as a staff administrator in charge of health education and health services. Mm -hmm. And I was there for seven years. Wow. So each time it was something, I always want to change to get something else. Yeah. Uh, and of course, there's a little more money each time I change, mm -hmm. but that was important. Dur during these years, did you you said you still keep in touch with fellows from the Pershing Rifle Group? Yes. Any yeah. other veterans groups? Uh, well, not in touch with them, except I'm, I've been a member of the, if I recall, it's the Association of the U.S. Army. Oh. And I've, for quite a number of years, mm -hmm. so I'm just reading it. Uh, I know my father was an American legionnaire, and I didn't join that. Oh, okay. so, uh, my brother is uh, part of the VFW. Yes. I didn't join that either. Yeah. You know. So I tried my own way. <laughs> How do you think your military experiences have affected your life? Any life lessons? Or well, I think I learned a lot about myself and what I couldn't do and what I could do. And I learned that there are a lot of things that I could do that I didn't think you could do, and you got to try it. And if you, if you don't succeed, you try it in a different way. And uh, as a quick aside, <laughs> I'm smiling and laughing at this one. In the military, they always said, well, is that according to the Army regulations? You know, if it wasn't according to Army regulations or special regulations, which was a subset of the Army. Army was the policy special regulations tell you exactly how to do it. So when I'd ever get from somebody, you know, that question, I would make up a number. The Army regulations had two sets of three numbers. So that could be, you know, 234, two, uh, 234. Uh, special regulations would have 234, 234, 1, or 2 as the subparagraph. And I would pull that. You made something fake up, some fake That's up. what I did. You got to do it. I knew it had to be done. And I'm getting some feedback that it shouldn't be done. Nothing, you know, tragic in this right. thing. And I can remember one lieutenant coming to me where the word sort of got out. And, that's me, and he tried to do it on me, but he reversed the sets of numbers. So you knew <laughs> yeah, it. And I said, well, there's no such thing. And he walks away shaking. And said, it was just a one of those funny experiences. Yeah. But I do learn that you got to try... You, you know, within limits, different ways to accomplish the goal mm -hmm. because that's what's the goal is and how you're going to how you're going to achieve it, mm -hmm. uh, and it may not be according to Hoyle at all times, mm -hmm. and so you managed. Uh, yes, that's, that's great. <laughs> oh, by the way, as an aside, I did the same thing with birds with my children. So, oh, that's a red ch red breasted uh, chestnut colored. Uh, Robin going you or, made or something. It up? Yes, and my kids flew. Oh yes, oh yes. <laughs> when they were little, okay. it was just a funny thing. That's it cute. was the same bit. That's cute. So. Good sense of humor. Um, how do you think your military service impacted your feelings about the military in general and war in general? Uh, that's, a, that's an excellent question because. Uh, it has evolved through the years of, of seeing how the military service can be used in certain ways, which as a clear thinking person, I say, this is top-down views, which are really I don't believe in. And I think it's a misuse 
of military, where it's been proper to use, uh, in my own opinion, uh, I felt very fine. I always was a, hey, you know, USA first kind of thing. But as I started seeing other big time things happening through our lives, and I said, this is, uh, you know, this is wrong. And this is not the best way to do things. And uh, I think other people have thought that way too. This, so in terms of my own feeling, I always have in my heart for all people who have served in the military, they're the ones who are serving, yes. and they're also the ones who may be doing the support or the fighting. Mm -hmm. And other people are telling you what to do about it, and it may not be exactly the best way to do it. That's mm -hmm. all I can say. Uh, what message would you like to leave for future generations who would hear this interview? Keep trying. Whatever you go, wherever you go, you can do it. And if you have to find a different way of doing it, you can accomplish and uh, just keep, keep doing it. Good message. D was there anything you did during your service that you regretted? That's another good question. Um, I don't think there was anything that I really regretted. I might have rethought, as I said, if my family situation were different, mm -hmm. uh, I might have made some other choices. Try, yeah. But. Uh, yeah, I regret right going on to that infiltration course of 80 yards in the sand with a broken back. I'm not. That's when I said, you're crazy, wow. guy. It just shows you you can't do anything. You set your mind. I, I, said, I did it. I couldn't do that now. Oh, wow, amazing. Anything you feel we haven't discussed or you'd like to add? Yes, there's one area, and it's, it's a little off from you know, our military or my military experience here. And it had to do with that family that still was in Russia at the time. Your family? My family. Mm -hmm. It's my, my, my father's two brothers and two sisters uh, and cousins of mine. And uh, one by the name of Mark had been uh, in the Soviet army. And apparently uh, it was like, equivalent of corporal or sergeant at the time, although he was 19 years old. And as I've gotten the story later on, as I've met some of the Russian relatives, that he was surrounded uh, by the German forces and called the artillery onto his own position and the others were with him uh, in that fight, and he died. This was World War II? World War II. Mm -hmm. And my youngest uncle, Volodya, who, as I said, all of these people were very athletic. And I, we have a picture of him doing, in, in a costume, was some type of circus, and he would handstand his, his body on an angle, and his, uh, his companion, his female companion, standing on his neck and on his legs. Wow. And he's holding this all up with one hand. Wow. He became a paratrooper in the Russian army who would paratroop behind enemy German lines and blow up things and had a price on his heads from the Germans. And they finally did catch him. They did. And he uh, received the equivalent of our Medal of Honor wow. in, from the Soviet Union. Schools were named after him. Did he survive? No, he no. did not survive. Wow. So, so those two, my other uncle, the second uh, youngest of my uncles, who was an ardent communist, mm -hmm. and I will say this, was one of the highest, if not the highest ranking Jew in the, in the communists in the Soviet wow. uh, Union at that time. Who was that, the, what decade? Uh, that was just before World War II, the beginning. Uh, he was accused of doing some bad things and was sent in prison in 1938 when Hitler signed with Stalin. And uh, he was eventually shot while he was in prison. And my aunt and the youngest son, Azari, was sent as, as they did at that time in, in the Soviet Union. Was he, they were sent to the uh, gulag, gulag, or family members of as they are family members of, of enemies of the state. All family members they would send. Well, I mean, they, yeah, 
two of my, my niece and nephew, another aunt, grabbed them when they saw the black-coated guys coming to take them, so that the, my aunt and this, at that time was a new ward up to eight, uh, less than eight months of age, mm -hmm. baby, they were both sent to the gulag. Wow. Eventually that aunt, who also was a whipper, uh, who we met as, as they traveled, eventually traveled to the United through the United oh. States with the ballet. Yeah. Uh, she was uh, like an elder, el, uh, I can say elder statement, a uh, feminine of elder st mm -hmm. statement. Uh, and uh, she, something I traveled about a thousand miles by train out to the camp where she knew the, the commandant knew of her uh -huh. and loved her and she, you know, she had been uh, one of these gals who you know, was, was in the ballet, uh, now teaching ballet. Uh -huh. And she, 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 bought, she brought a bottle of vodka, <laughs> you know. Wow. And they, they my, my other aunt, Rachel and, and Azari, the baby now two years old, were moved to a neighboring town mm. under restriction. Mm. Because, because she was... Because she commandant remembered her and liked her and liked the vodka. No one else ever came out. Oh, amazing. All, That's all amazing. All of a sudden, the stories we've heard of how she let... Uh, this was Rachel, uh, how she let how people know where she, she was going. <laughs> she would, with charcoal from matches or something, write on toilet paper and throw it out at stations. Oh. And at one of the stations, she saw a woman giving a nod or something, and she somehow forwarded that to let the other people know this is where she was. Wow. Yeah, I mean, there's the, all these amazing. types of yeah. stories yeah. And, and many more. Wow, and that, it's amazing. Good yeah. stories. Yeah. Okay. Anything else you can think of you'd like to share? I think that covers a wide area. Well, it sure does. Yeah. <laughs> all right, thank you so much for okay. your service, Manny. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for having me.